comment right now how many ocarinas you think I have in my collection. If you get it anywhere remotely right, you should subscribe. If you don't get it right, you should also subscribe. Just subscribe. I'm on my handheld camera, I'm gonna do a quick little intro of um, the sheer volume of ocarinas that I got right now. Okay, let's go. So, most of my ceramic ones are in some kind of bag or protective case. Um, so you'll mostly be seeing the plastic ones in like small pendants right now, but like I just I, I Underestimated how many ocarinas I have there's there's so many and there's even more under my desk But I just didn't want things to fall off. So we'll we'll start throwing things up one by one and uh, yeah uh, Ocarina collection time as you all know, I have a absurdly large amount of ocarinas in my collection. I've been playing the ocarina for a decade now, a decade and change. And over those 10 years, I have accumulated many, many ocarinas. So uh, let's get down to business and I will do a uh, overview of my collection. So first we will start with uh, my plastic ocarinas. I have a ton of plastic ocarinas, most of which are Alto C. We'll start with uh, the ones that I recommend the most. These three ocarinas right here, the uh, two Knights by Noble, Knight by Nobles, Knights by Noble, I don't know, uh, and the uh, Bravura Alto C. Uh, these are probably my, my number one recommendations for beginning ocarina players because they are high, high, high quality ocarinas. They look fantastic and they also sound just as fantastic. Uh, I've already gone over a breakdown comparing these two types of ocarinas, the Knight by Noble and the Bravura. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, I'll leave a card right there as well as a link in the description. All right, next up. Uh, that's three ocarinas so far, so three. Okay, the next up, these ocarinas are no longer in production. These are mountain ocarinas. Um, the one right here is Alto C, and the one right here is Soprano G. Um, these ocarinas are made of polycarbonate and are literally some of the most indestructible instruments you will ever have. But yeah, that is five. Next up on the plastic train. So I've already mentioned this uh, triple Alto C from STL. Um, so I'm not even going to go over that, but that brings our count up to six. Next up, uh, we're going to go over um, the Brio. I believe this is the Brio uh, Soprano C from Songbird. This one is really, really good for the price. Well, and while I would recommend that someone get an Alto C as their first ocarina, this is a great first Soprano ocarina. Uh, it's basically indestructible because it's made of plastic. It's quite loud, which is honestly a benefit in the case of like you taking it with you to play at an event or in the streets or whatever and i'm a big fan of this ocarina i have taken this with me to many an event and it's been a great companion for me this brings us up to seven and that's just plastic so far there is a reason i'm such a big advocate of plastic ocarinas because i've used so many of them uh next up this is the songbird seven hole ocarina of time replica so while it looks like um, there's like seven holes on the front, there's actually five holes on the front. Uh, these two holes right here, uh, this one and this one, they're fake holes. They don't actually do anything other for aesthetic purposes to look like the Ocarina of Time from the game. Um, this one actually plays like a pendant with some modified notes for going above what a six hole range would be as well as going below. So this has this has the equivalent range of a 12 hole Alto C um, packed into seven holes with a modified pendant playing configuration. Quick demo time. That's eight, and that covers most of my plastic ocarinas. However, we have a, a few more. In fact, we have five more. I'm not gonna do a demo because I've done already a full video, but in here I have five 3D printed ocarinas. They're all varying quality, and I've already done a video on my YouTube channel going over 3D printed ocarinas with my friend Big Rig Creates, who made four out of five of these. Uh, but yeah, that's these are technically plastic. Um, and I have five 3D printed ocarinas. So that brings the number up to 13. 13 ocarinas and we haven't even left the plastic realm. So now uh, let's go over my 
uh, Zelda replicas in ceramic. This is the older model of the STL Ocarina of Time. Uh, it's an Alto C 12 hole. I've had this one for, I think, nine years. Nine and a half years. As of Christmas, it'll be 10 years because I bought my very first Ocarina in a May of 2011 at an anime convention. I got my second and third and fourth Ocarinas over the course of the following months. Um, those would be the uh, triple plastic Alto C and the two mountain Ocarinas. And then I got this one as a Christmas present in Christmas of 2011. So this, this Ocarina I've had for almost 10 years. It's remained in great condition and it's been a great... Uh, great little guy for me. I have already compared Ocarina of Time replicas on a separate video, which is titled, I believe, What is the Best Ocarina of Time Replica? So next up, we're going to do uh, the Songbird Ocarina of Time replica. This one I got in the pearl finish. I actually prefer the STL one to the Songbird one because uh, I prefer high breath pressure ocarinas, and this one is absurdly low breath pressure, and I like to blow hard into ocarinas. But anyways, this one is really pretty. Uh, I got this um, last fall. Yeah, I, I, I bought this one last fall during a uh, Labor Day sale for Songbird Ocarinas. Um, then we're going to move on to the Spencer model. All right, so this is the Spencer Alto C Ocarina of Time uh, replica. Uh, it has, if you look on the fipple hole right there, there's a little notch, which is intentional, which does slightly mod modify how it sounds. And this is definitely by far my favorite Ocarina of Time replica. Spencer actually gave me a discount on this one because uh, of the good press I had when I talked about wanting this Ocarina so badly in one of my most viewed videos. So this one is by far the most expressive uh, out of all my Ocarina of Time replicas. You get out what you put in with this Ocarina. Um, I would not recommend a Spencer Ocarina for beginners simply because like you do need to have really good control of your breath to get a great sound. But when you have good control, this one has one of the most superb sounds of any Ocarina I've ever played. Um, really love it. It is quite expensive, but I do really love this uh, Spencer Alto C 12 hole Ocarina of Time replica. So that wraps up the uh, single chamber Ocarina of Time replicas, but I do have one more. This is the Songbird Double Ocarina of Time. It is an Alto C. It has two chambers, and uh, I, I, I like this one a lot. It's not my favorite multi-chamber ocarina because it is so smooth on the front. It's not great for uh, like quick uh, chamber switching. This one does take a bit of getting used to for finger placement. I'm actually a big proponent of get good on the ocarinas you have more so than buy more ocarinas. But as an ocarina YouTuber, it does behoove me to have as many ocarinas as possible for coverage, comparison, and review. If you get this ocarina and it is your only double ocarina, you will be very much taken care of. It is a great instrument, one that I just need to get more used to. Oh, there's one more Zelda-inspired one that I have. This is a uh, little 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 uh, soprano C or soprano soprano B flat pendant. It's in a very unique key. It's a perfect size to like wear as a little like as as an accessory. I do like this one a lot. I actually have the exact same one, but with a different design. Um, this is a uh, Songbird's uh, Coco Pelli design. While we're on the subject of pendants, let's just go down that rabbit hole. So next up, I honestly don't remember where I got this one. This was a gift from somebody, but I believe this is either STL or Songbird. Um, it's just a very cute little, I believe, Soprano C pendant with six holes. Next up, I have a very different little pendant. Um, this one is not tuned very well at all. Um, this is the type of ocarina you might find at like a renaissance fair. It is inspired by Native American designs, but this one is uh, sold strictly as a novelty. As you can see, all, fours, all four holes are the same size, same with the holes on the back. So realistically, this one is a uh, visual novelty rather than an actual instrument. Um, so I'm not even going to bother with a sound demo because it's going to be terrible. Actually, because it's going to be terrible, let's do a sound demo. So... This one is very pretty. I love the design, but it is not a good instrument. Um, but I, I do like it because of the design. And this one was also a gift. I have no idea where I got it. <laughs> this is the, the baby dragon tooth from a Songbird Ocarina in a 
the very pretty metallic design. It's a soprano G. It's very, very pretty. Has a nice cord for you to wear it. And uh, yeah, I've had this one since 2016. This is the Max Range Pendant Alto C from STL Ocarina. This one is eight holes and has the exact same range as a 12 hole Alto C Ocarina. Um, it's a cool novelty. It's not my favorite to play, but I did get pretty good on Pendant using this one in particular. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a quick demo of the scale and whatnot. And it does high notes the exact same way as the Ocarina of Time 7 hole does with just uh, using your, your middle finger and adjustment of the holes. So let's get to it. So it's a really cool instrument, but Honestly, if I want that range, I would rather just use a 12 hole. In this big box, um, this is the uh, Bass C Seed Pod Pendant from Songbird Ocarina. Uh, I got this one as, this was my very first Bass Ocarina. I got it because I was a broke college student at the time, I think. I hope I was in college. I, might, I was either end of high school or early college, and I really wanted a Bass Ocarina. And this was really the, the best uh, price option I had available. So, and this one is, really pretty it's quite large like that's compared to my head it's like as big as my face <laughs> but uh this one's a really cool instrument i am a big fan of it it is only six holes so it only does have an octave plus two range R this is a nice little wrist strap so you don't drop it but it's a very very nice little guy this is either echo or aria soprano c from stl um it's honestly really solid it's very pretty. I don't use it very much because if I'm taking Soprano C somewhere, it's going to be my plastic one or it's just going to be incorporated into a double or triple ocarina. But I'm a big fan of this one. Also, my cats really hate when I play Soprano ocarina. While I don't use it very much, I do think it is a great ocarina. And this was my first ever Soprano ocarina. So uh, I've had this one for a long time. And while I've probably in total played it for about like five to seven hours, I'm glad to have it as a part of my collection. Um, next, this one is the Soprano G Strawfire from uh, Songbird. Um, this one is really great, but you do have to clear spit out from it more frequently than other ocarinas, which you do so by just covering the sound hole and blowing hard. This is uh, my only 12-hole Soprano G ocarina. In the very rare instances when I do need to play something on Soprano G, this is literally the only option I have outside of like a couple double ocarinas and whatnot and my uh, Mountain Ocarina. One of my absolute favorite ocarinas to just bust out and play. I actually have only had this one for about a year. I bought this alongside um, my Songbird Ocarina of Time replica. This is the, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it is the uh, black Songbird Ocarina with white roses with an alto C. Um, it has a very powerful voice or has medium to high breath pressure and is just an absolute blast to play. I did this for the demo on my um, Impossible Notes workshop for ocarinas, for Alto C ocarinas. And this is like my favorite ocarina to use for that. So I do have a very, very personal connection with this ocarina in that I know a lot of specific techniques, specific usability, etc. for it. Very good instrument. I'm not gonna demo because you've probably heard it in a bunch of my videos before. Okay, moving forward um we're gonna go to my muse ocarina from songbird i got this one back in high school this is an alto e flat it is 10 holes um it's, it is a very unique design definitely not for everyone I, I think the weird little face on it is quite creepy so fun fact fun story real quick uh, the, the face on this ocarina I was actually able to use it for like a back when Snapchat face swapping was all the rage. I actually was able to like swap my face with this Ocarina's face and to make some really, really cursed images. I need to see if I still have those somewhere or if I can take those again. Um, but yeah, this was <laughs> this Ocarina, you can do a face swap with it and it is absolutely cursed. I can't do that live on Twitch, of course, because I don't have Snapchat technology baked into it, but it is quite hilarious. Next up, I have a tenor g which is an alto g but stl uses weird nomenclature uh, you could watch a video by david eric ramos on why it's weird and wrong but i have a alto g from stl i bought it from their booth at a convention but here it is it's a very very nice finish very nice design um one thing to note with this is that the thumb holes um i don't know if this is representative of every model but the thumb holes are not sanded very well and not um 
uh, what's it called, glazed very well. So the corners on them are actually a bit sharp, not enough to cut you, but enough to make it like uncomfortable to use for a long time or to press very hard. And for heavier ocarinas, you do want a tighter grip as you hold it so you don't drop it. So while this ocarina does have a great sound, I personally have some issues with it just for long-term use because of the sharp thumb holes. But it's a very nice ocarina. <sighs> Next up, I have uh, one that I don't even know where it's from, but um, this was a gift from a friend. Uh, well, actually, I bought it off of a friend who was like, oh, I bought an ocarina because you made me interested in it. But then I realized I didn't like this one. And then I realized that this ocarina is just like not very easy to play. It's a very pretty ocarina. It's very low breath pressure. So that's why it's not my cup of tea. But it's not a bad ocarina. And my friend gave it to me because he thought it was a bad ocarina. <laughs> Um, and he thought I could make it work. And at the time I was like, I cannot make this work. But that was because I realized I need to use less breath than I think on some ocarinas. This next one is my baby. It is the one I use in Okabanda. This is an, a clackle, Claudio Colombo, bass G. Um, and it is eight holes. It, it plays, um, an octave plus one. And, um... It just has the one of the nicest sounds on any ocarina I have. This is what I use in Okabanda. Okabanda bought this one for me. It is my baby. If you watch anything by Okabanda, you've heard me use this ocarina. I, I love it. It is mwah. The last two that I'm gonna show you, well, they're actually both novelties. So novelty number one, I bought this in uh, Okinawa in Japan. And um, you know, see, it says Okinawa right there. This particular type of ocarina, is available from most touristy places in Japan. Like I bought one like this in Hiroshima. Got got this one in Okinawa. The ones I, the one I got in Hiroshima, I got, I gave to members of Okabanda so they could have like an ocarina from Japan. But yeah, this is a little novelty one. I don't know what key it's in. It's not very well tuned, but it's a fun little instrument. It plays one octave even though it has 11 holes. One octave is in tune. And then this last one on my spree of uh, single chamber ocarinas is actually was custom made uh, for members of Okabanda. So at the uh, 2018 United States Ocarina Festival, um, the maker for Imperial City Ocarinas made little, um, just like little flute looking guys for all the members of Okabanda. So this is an ocarina. It has like the sound hole right there and uh it just you just cover as many holes as you can and uh try for the best it's not like a concert instrument but it's a nice little novelty yeah it's uh not particularly usable for uh like actual playing but it is nice just to just like play notes on and kind of just vibe with it it is an ocarina though so that counts and I have several more ocarinas to show you all. First up is, I think, my number one favorite ocarina. This is the Songbird Harmony Triple. It's not like other girls. It's not like most triple ocarinas in that most double and triple ocarinas are solely focused on increasing range. This one does a balance of increasing range and also making opportunities for harmony. So the second chamber is actually reflective of the right hand on the first chamber. And the third chamber is reflective of the left hand on the first chamber. So let me illustrate. Then. David Eric Ramos actually helped design this one. Um, this is by Songbird. It's by far my favorite ocarina because I love to like just do harmonies from time to time. And this one also, because it has so many overlapping notes on many songs that would be difficult to play on a double or triple ocarina because like of the chamber switching, this gives you some leeway for like preparing your left hand while continuing a run on your right hand because it overlaps. Next up is arguably my second favorite ocarina. This is the Imperial City uh, Triple Bass C Ocarina or Bass C Triple Ocarina. This thing is gigantic. I love it. I love it so much. Um, this one is fully on board with the range extension ideology for ocarina crafting, and uh, it just has an amazing, amazing sound. And it is so affordable. It's like 140 bucks for this ocarina, and most other companies, when they're selling a any base ocarina, it'll be at least $150. Um, this one is a quarter of the price of the equivalent range of ocarina from STL, and they're both made of purple clay, which is like the primo premium ocarina ceramic you can use. 
This is like the best bang for buck ocarina you can possibly buy, other than maybe getting the max range version of this, which just has a few extra notes. If we're going under the idea of like, okay, if you're if you're if you were sent to a desert island and you could only choose one ocarina, it would either be this one or the Songbird Harmony Triple, and that would be a very tough decision because uh, this one can play more music, but the Harmony Triple has just so many more ways to use it despite the limited range in comparison. All right, we're, we're, we're hitting the final stretch. Um, this right here is the STL Max Range Alto C Double Ocarina. They'll call it Tenor C, but it is Alto C. Um, this one has the range of a typical triple ocarina and the body of a double ocarina. And it does so by having a thumb hole for the second chamber, which um, when you take it off, you can put back down a few fingers and gain like three or four extra notes. So here's, I'm going to do a quick uh, demo of the range and uh, that's it. I don't want to overstay my welcome with this ocarina collection. Basically, the thumb hole on the second chamber serves as your chamber switch for going to the third, a theoretical third chamber, but doing so in one chamber. It's really, really cool design. Um, it is not my favorite multi-chamber ocarina to use, but I use this one for like three to five years as my primary ocarina. And um, I've, it's been an amazing instrument for the entire time I've had it. This is the Songbird um, Double Soprano G. It's a very nice ocarina. It's very, very compact. It's like the smallest multi-chamber ocarina I've ever seen. It's smaller than an alto C. And it has the range of a soprano G plus a soprano C ocarina with its uh, two chambers. The last multi-chamber ocarina that I have. This one is the Spencer um, double alto C. So this one is very unique in that it has the full range of a 12 full ocarina in its first chamber, whereas the typical double ocarina cuts off a few notes at the top, which are then fed back in the second chamber. So this, but then the second chamber is that of a normal double ocarina. So this one has overlapping notes upward, just like the harmony triple has overlapping notes downward. Playing both Fs at the same time, you can see they're perfectly in tune. I really like this ocarina. Um, I don't play it very much simply because, like, I have my Harmony Triple. But this one is, A, very ergonomic. B, has that signature um, Spencer sound of, like, you get out of it what you put into it. And you get to express yourself very, very vividly with this ocarina with how you blow. So I'm a huge fan of this one. It is quite expensive at, I think, around 250 or 300 bucks. But... Uh, it is a amazingly solid instrument. Highly recommended. Okay, I think that's all my ocarinas. 13 plastics, including my um, 3D printed. I have 11 Zelda and Pendant ocarinas, and then 9 non-Zelda transverse for a total of uh, 33, and then 5 non-Zelda multi-chambers for a total of 38 ocarinas. I thought I would be lower. I have more ocarinas than I thought. Oh my god. And then honorable mentions. I have a slide whistle from Okinawa. This one's very fun. Slide whistles are technically ocarinas, so I can count it because they make sound the same way ocarinas do. Um, so actually 39. 39 ocarinas. Uh, and then this is not an ocarina at all. But uh, this is a bamboo flute I got in Okinawa. This is a really cool little flute that I got. Does not count as an ocarina because it is indeed like an actual flute. Uh, but yeah, that's my ocarina collection. <laughs> There's so many ocarinas. Oh my god. <laughs> Your boy has 39 ocarinas. It is, I've accumulated so many ocarinas over the years and I thought my count was like 30 to 33. It turns out the count was much higher. I mean, if you take out my novelty, like my total novelty ocarinas and my 3D printed like ocarinas, the total is actually three, no four novelty and five 3D printed. So it would be 30 legitimate ocarinas, but I have so many ocarinas. It's still nothing compared to like 
my good friend David Eric Ramos. You should watch some of his videos on his collections because I, I believe he does do an update on that every so often and it is crazy how many ocarinas he has. But yeah, if you enjoyed this ocarina collection, um, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to know about any ocarina that I showed here, please let me know in the comments or if you're watching me on Twitch, in the Twitch chat. So uh, thanks again. Leave a like and uh, bye!